Today, happy new week to every one of you. Today is 20th June 2022. I appreciate every one of you this morning. If you're just joining us, please help us to share. How are you guys doing? Let me go to the comment section so we can just move on straight to this broadcast. You can see Mother of All is right there with us. Good morning to you, Mommy. Thanks very much for joining us and happy new week to you. Thank you very much. I can see now Mabella is right there. Good afternoon. Or good morning to you. Thanks very much for joining us. I can see Prince Sonny, right? Thanks very much for joining us. Good morning to you. Maria Palma, my dear sister, good morning to you. Thanks very much for joining us. And happy new week to every one of you. Yes, we're going to be talking about the things that is affecting us in our state right now. In fact, our own kingdom. Yes, I understand some people want us to speak beneath and in terms of talking about things like this, trust me. Is already on the public space and everything is being analyzed broadcasted with english so i think the only way we can interpret this is also have to be in english as well so um you need to understand with us okay so we are going to be featuring a short video from our brother isodua and we are going to be featuring the main video on this particular broadcast today from our brother mr stephen Iriamato. So thank you very much, for my people, for joining us. As you all are aware, what is currently going on in Edo State, right at, right in Benin City there, or in our kingdom. As you all know that Ogiame and his uh, people, you know, are stepping on, on the toes of our own king. Although I'm not the right person to talk on this, to be honest, I'm not the right person. Uh, I'm too young to handle a broadcast like this. So um, I understand one or two persons have been, you know, bombarding me with messages and all that. Naja was talk about how to do this and do that. Yes, you know, Epa, uh, Epa Monde came out yesterday to talk about it. And our brother, Mr. Stephanie Ramato, is about to talk about it as well. I think, yes, this is Naja was team that is better like that. You know, we should take it like that. For me, I don't really know much about it, but I have to learn from the best. But one thing I know, is that we cannot or we will not allow anyone to disrespect or demote our identity. We must have that in mind. Regardless of who you are, we cannot allow anyone to disrespect or demote our identity. Benin is our kingdom. Benin, we don't have another kingdom, is our kingdom. Our king is our father. Is the only king we know, especially me, the only king I've ever known, his father and him, since I was born. Because of that, we must do everything to protect our king. If we, if you lost anything to do with your kingdom, you will lost your identity. That's it. You know, if you stay for Lagos, stay, 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 make the concert, you'll be a Yoruba man, you know, it's not possible. You know, if you stay Igbo land, stay, 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 automatically the concert, you know, you, you are not Igbo man, it's not possible. You can't, you can't move your load to the north. After all decades, they'll not say you'll not be a uh, man, it's not possible. Your identity is your identity. You must do everything to protect it. We cannot sit to watch one or two persons trying to bring down our kingdom. It's not possible. But I would like us to learn or listen to the best right now. Because they know more about this. They know what to say about this. For me, like I said before, I don't really know much about this. And I think this whole thing is too big out of me to handle. Although my platform is already being offered uh my own father Pamode came out yesterday to talk about it my own brother is about to talk about it, mr steph in the Ramato right now so they're no better than me and our brother isodua will also talk a little about it he also know better than me on this particular case you don't just jump into a matter and be talking when you don't have knowledge of uh, knowledge of it thank you very much my people for joining us we need to move on right now 
Before that, I would like us to listen to two minutes of our brother Isodua on this. I went two months ago when we had a filler that we were thinking of amending the greatest impediment that they have, like I have said, is the 1979 edit. Is the 1970? That's the greatest impediment that they have. You need to amend this before we amend that. That criminal risk can ever be recognized. You need to amend this. That is their greatest problem. They are finding a way. Or they are going to find ways to amend it except we stop them this is the greatest ah we are carrying out i go high court go begin a print paper my man my email winner but i needed to go print it because i needed to know things and everything clearly stated here that will be amen is the chief under the robber they need to amend this before gaming can ever be recognized and that's where the problem is, but we must not lose our guard. Any any other person can stand neutral, but I've just told them avoid me before the end of this year, so that uh, no, your hand will arrow in online. Avoid me. I said it on my platform. I said it. I said avoid me. Please avoid me on this matter. Avoid me. Just avoid me. All right. Like I said before, it's a very sensitive matter that uh, for you to talk about it, you must have full knowledge about it. So I believe our brother, Mr. Stephanie Ramato, uh, came up with a very, very significant information to pass to us right now. So let's listen to this and take it from here. God bless you all. Please share and like this video. Yeah, sorry, guys. Uh, I don't know the network is, is really failing this morning. And let me let me let me try to do a very quick one right now as i <coughs> as i go to the interview then i will just uh, do my analysis then i will be done from here because the network i don't know what is happening this morning so an audience with his his majesty Oba overame not by C, before he joined his ancestors interview notes what the first question was thank you for sh having us today your majesty how are you feeling then our uh, royal majesty of government embassy answered very free from my illness then there was a quick question from the interviewer your majesty it is exactly 70 years to the to the day today that the british put together a naval squadron of 1200 royal marine to capture your majesty in abunda your city we apologize for their cruelty but we would just like to get your views on what happened and on life for you after that punitive expedition then they asked another question again the british claim that they were acting in response to your soldiers eliminating a peaceful party that are sent to bring you present at christmas what would you like to say in response to that then our royal majesty answered and said what is christmas my people had no idea about christmas we had a sacred ancestral ceremony during that period called the igwe festival and the british party led by lawyer philip knew that and was told to wait for just two days for me to complete my fasting but he said it was too big and too busy for us to complete our ceremonies he decided to invade our private ceremonies during my fasting and prayer period and when no one was allowed to talk or disturb me putting together a party of over 270 officials and soldiers he set out to march on our city against all advice that this was an unwise move my chief of army staff saw this as a deliberate act of unprovoked war declaration and acted accordingly to defend our city what would you have done if you had been in this position then the news the national zero one zero one that is the one that is interviewer now 
as the customer. So we are very sorry, Your Majesty. We will move on to another question. So this was the question and answer between the very of by sea and the interviewer that came from London. Yeah, guys, I'm, going to, I'm coming somewhere right now. The British reported that you were the last person to evacuate your city when it was being burnt down to the ground. It must have been very painful for you to watch centuries of your ancestors hard work burn to cinders. Why did you wait till the bitter end? It's so your majesty answered. You just imagine this. And recently in the new year, bless all my people's household and prayed for their prosperity this year. Then one month on, the city is burning and I flee with the people. How would that have made us look as divine king of the people? My duty was to watch over their houses and the city until there was nothing left. My assessor would have expected this of us. Another question again. So the paper report widely, uh, widely about the treasure drove. This is where I'm coming from now. Look at this question now. The paper report widely about the treasure drove in your storerooms. The British reported finding intricate bronze blocks, harvests, and terracotta at work of the highest quality covered in the dust of air. What was the idea behind this? Okay, the entire artifact that was taken away was actually gotten from the palace of the Oba Robini. I'm coming, guys. Just hold on. We were renovating the palace and put this away for safekeeping. I must add that most of this work the British found there had been in the storeroom for centuries. My ancestor wanted to record and preserve their history in expensive and durable form. It is only duty to uphold this desire. Then the question is again, Your Majesty, you know you now live in Calabar. How have things been with you? Traumatic? Losing one's place in the world is never easy. Having to cope with being a nobody after being a king in charge of a proud and industrious people and of a country is very humiliating. But one has to do all one can do to survive. Even once upon a time king like me, one lesson we made sure we taught our people was when the going gets tough, the tough must get going. This mindset set superior stock up apart from ordinary stock i am made of a superior stock this trend period attests to this fact because i can say has it been difficult adjusting to your new position you have no idea just how difficult it had been some people deliberating scum you with impunity for the sake of just being able to do so what one incident stands out for you? One day, one of my children was playing with one with other children. One of them deliberately had buttered her, injuring her sadly. She suffered a fractured jaw. Now, I know that and that. Now, I've just read where I'm going to. Now, I, I there have been a very you know. funny traumatizing narratives you know about one orobo saojo who wrote an article that got most of us furious particularly Zodu Waimaswe, you know who one of the brightest you know being a historian of our time and and having listened to him i quickly you know went to his work to read this very particular unpleasant you know provocative article written by this young guy you know from the blues and and having gone through the article i i came to the conclusion there was something that was fundamentally wrong okay now during the entire process 
of the invasion of 1897. There was no way in the story that the Ogiyami family was mentioned. And we only had one king that was recognized even before the coming of the British. People are saying the British actually made the Oba to be recognized. No, they invaded the palace of the Oba. We have the, the likes of Opobu. We have the likes of, of Nana of Ishekiri and many other kings like the, the ones from the north and other that were being mentioned during this time of trade between the, the Portuguese, the, the, the Germans, the Briton, and so on and so, and so forth. Okay, guys? But there was never a time in the history before the amalgamation, before the invasion, before the colonial, colonialization that a kingdom like Utanta was mentioned. Like, like, like a king called Ogiyami was mentioned. Okay, guys? It, there, there was no... The history don't have that before or even after. We must... We, the Benin, must try to start understanding, you know, the, the, the plans of the enemy to undermine the throne that, that with so much value, with so much respect. I'm a pastor, but one thing I, I, I have come to understand is the, 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 the throne of the upper of Benin must be respected. It is, it is God-ordained. Go read the Bible. Go read the Quran if you're a Muslim. It is God-ordained that has been there from time immemorial. There were kings in, 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 in Israel. There were kings in Saudi Arabia. Where, where actually this religion actually came from. So we should not demonize our own tradition or because we are, we are believed you know, in a God that we know is supreme. Apart from that, if you read the scripture very carefully, these king, kings were ordained by God. We all know the, 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 the story of Saul. Who, who, who became the, the first king of Israel. We all know how it transcended to this day. Okay, guys? Now, having said that, during the time of the, of the coronation of the Oba of Bini, Oba Eware II, there was some dramatic action or inaction that was taken by Arisco or Semege. Who probably go around calling himself the Ogiyame, you know, and uh, and uh, our governor then is Excellency Adam Falio Shomole. Did it needful to curb that very unpleasant, you know, attitude of this young guy before he becomes, you know, a public menace and? Uh, Oshomole took this guy to court immediately for the sake of peace and tranquility in, in, in Benin City, knowing fully where the, the action of this guy would have created a very unpleasant you know, situation in Benin if it was not, you know, actions were not taken. Okay, guys? And, and when Oshomole did that, he, that actually brought you know, peace back to, to reality. And don't forget, guys, you know, there is always a mock, a mock you know, rest, wrestling between the Ogiyame and the Incoming Oba Benin. You know, between the Ogiyame, this Ogiyame and our, our father, Oba Ewari uh, uh, II, there was no mock fight. The reason was this present Ogiyame, Arisko Osemege, is not an Ogiyame. We must understand this very carefully. Arisko mother is an Ogiyame, not the father. So that shows if even the chieftaincy title is hereditary. It is always on the patana, not the matana. That, that is what the Benin Kingdom stands for. So, the first disqualification of Arisko Osemiki as the Ogiyame of Benin Kingdom, not Utantan, I'm going to explain that, is, it is from the matana side of the Ogiyame, not the patana. That's number one. Number two, the chief title that Arisco or Zemige carries around was not confined on him by the palace of the Obara Bene. The guy who actually was confined on with that chief title disappeared some years back and nobody knows of his about. By law, when an Ogiyame dies, go, this is an issue that is verifiable, guys. 
When Ogiyame dies, the, the palace is notified of the, dem of, of, of the demise of Anogiyame, which will prompt the palace to now, you know, install that chieftaincy title on the next qualified, you know, by hierarchy of the next Ogiyame. But in this case, the palace of the upper Benin before the, the, the demise, you know, of, 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 of our father, of, uh, of Bahari Diawa, of blessed memory, he was not aware that the, the Ogiyame that he actually confided the chieftain title on is dead. The body was not found, no better was made, the family have not made a, 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 a proper publication to say that the other Ogiyame was dead. Now, do not forget, in 1897, when our father, His Royal Majesty, Omono Baledoku Akpolo, Obavora Menok Basi, was deported to Calabar, the throne of the Benin Kingdom was vacant. Nobody could step on the throne until the demise of a father. Just after his death, that his son, Kabarakenzua, went and, and, you know, and do a proper verification before he was enthroned to sit on the throne of his ancestors. This is how the position of the Olia, the Ezomo, the Eros, and the Ogiemis are in the kingdom. So by natural justice, Arisko Senegie is not qualified to sit on the throne or on the stool of the Ogiame. So that was why our father, with his wisdom, never allowed that mock you know, battle between the Ogiame and the, the royal house to ever hold. And many people will not understand what actually transited into that. There was actually a fight when Oba Eweka the first, the son of Oba Romia, known by Yoruba, but in beneath is called Omononya. Where Eweka was coming from a god, where he was raised up by his, by his Matana family to come and take over his throne with the head of the Uzamas. There was a battle between the Ogiamians and the royal household. Do not forget that the Ogiamians, as at this time, they saw God in the, in the when, when Oba, uh, the last Ogiso, Ogiso Ewedo, when Ogiso Ewedo passed into glory, there was no one to take over the throne of the Benin kingdom because there was no head. The only heir have been, have been purportedly slaughtered by the by the malicious you know a deception of this you know wife of the oba known as esago okay guys which probably become the odudua of the yoruba kingdom but we are not going into that history today guys now when there was not a, a, a break in the in the transition A guy became so popular, so strong that he had to kill a monster who was coming, you know, into the into the village every time to take away people, devour people. Because of the strength of this young man, they decided to make him an administrator. That was why that title Ogie Aramie, Ogie Aramie, that, that's the meaning. It is kings that we see, not an administrator. You were just an administrator sitting, you know, to hold on to the stool until the right owner came. Guys, let's be a little bit realistic right now. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to you know, try to make this very clear. Now, after 
are about 47 years of the rule of the Benin by an administrator. The Benin people saw that the Vian, who is the second son, became so arrogant, wanted to take over the throne and all come out of making an hereditary thing. The Uzamanians went into to consult the oracles, finding a, a solution to the problem that is about to envelop the Benin Kingdom. When it, it went and ordered blood, not the blue blood, it's going to take over the throne at all costs. It was during this process that they were told that a Kaladera, also known as Izodua, was still alive. And during this time, the Benins who were going to Ileife to actually do business noticed that the king, the guy who rules over this kingdom, looks like the son, looks like the guy who was supposed to have been purportedly killed. That is why, if you go to Ileife today, they, 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 they are laughing. I mean, only wear this crown that covers his face. Oduduwa did that probably to shade himself from being recognized by the Benins that were coming in to do business in that land. Okay, guys, that was the reason that's how that veil came. If the veil was to cover himself from being recognized by the Benin people who were coming in to do business. So they went to in. We all know the story. Now, I have asked questions separately. Why do you think the Benin people will walk a proud nation who had conquered up to Ghana in Ghana, who conquered up to Benin Republic, who went as far as to Onicha, who decided to go and get a king from the Yoruba land? I've said that to ask people, come on, in this time, was there any, any, any tie between the Yorubas and the Benin? No, these were two different nations. Something actually prompted that. And you know, in those days, people don't do things without not consulting the oracles. No, nobody does anything without the oracle being consulted to actually find a way they need to go. So I'm not sure the Zermanians, the only the Zomas and Co. did what they did without consulting first. The gods of the land. Which actually speaks to them in those days. According to their beliefs. So there was something unique about the move. And why did they go to seek for the return of the lost son of the Oba, the prince? It was because of the actions and the inactions of the Ogiamen's family. These are histories. Because you're going to ask me some questions. Why would some people just wake up after 20 years, after 47 years of a, a family holding on to power and people decide to say, no, we want to go and get the, the lost king. And the Benin supported them. Another thing you need to understand is this. Why would the entire Benin kingdom stood behind a foreigner against their own, according to, according to what is being purported by some quarters. That the family of the Oba are from the Yoruba lineage. We have already said something here before. The Matana is had nothing to do with the lineage of the king. That's why I just I joke, you know, this Aris as, 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 you know, as an example I started on. Yes, Oromia Monda was a Yoruba woman. We all know that. But the father was a blue blood. Of the kingship lineage of the Ogie, Ogiso. The entire Benin kingdom, the Zayami and the entire Benin kingdom stood behind Romania. But Romania couldn't come in because of language barrier and many other things. He decided as he was going back, he got pregnant to the Daughter of the Ogi of a God, which also another royal institution. So two royalties met 
at Agor, and his son called Ewaka was begotten. Okay, guys, Ewaka grew and lived with his with his with his with his matana at Agor until he became, you know, big enough to take back what rightfully belongs to him. That's what what you call today a Kepara treaty came into existence. It was during that fight that they had a treaty that both parties must come together on a certain, you know, a, a principles which has added on to today. I'll ask a simple question. When the British were coming into Benin, did they ever visit the palace of the Ogiame? If Ogiame was a kingdom, Existing in Paris pursuit with the palace of the Obar of Benin. Is there any history book that says that, that the, the British people came and had a visit to the German family? That's number one. Number two, in that very particular article written by what this Orobosa Ojo or whatever his name was called, he said some part of the artifact that was found in the palace of the Obar of Benin was actually belonging to the Ogiami. I want to ask a simple question, guys. If the Ogyame is the all-powerful, if the Ogyame is the all, all, all-knowing, as they have been claimed to be, that the 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 the, the, the lineage, the dynasty of the Obashit in Benin is from Yoruba. How can a Yoruba man go into your palace and take over all? That was in your palace and take it to their palace without a fight. That's what we must think. The entire artifact that was found was found in the palace of the Obar of Benin, in the lineage of Omononya, in the lineage of Oba Ereka, down to His Royal Majesty, Omanabane Dukwa Bolo Oba Vora Menon Baisi. The entire artifact today, that is the bone of contention, was actually under the custody of the same people, which some people to that to discredit of not being the owner of Benin Kingdom. People like me, like I said, I'm a pastor, but I respect my tradition and my culture very well. I may not believe in the developer part of it because of my beliefs, but one thing is this: I will not allow anyone to rubbish. My identity. Bini is my identity. The royal house is my father. No one talk about the British kingdom the way many Benins talk about the royal, the, the royal kingdom. No one talk about the Swedish, the Spanish, the Italian. Just name them. Kingdom the way many people, many of us, of the Benin origin, talk about our palace. May for believe because we are Christian today or because we are Muslim today, then the palace of Benin becomes irrelevant. Go to Mecca, go and see what is there. If you dare it and talk to their king, they will cut off your head. They will chop off your head. You must begin to respect your value, you must begin to respect your culture. The white man came to Nigeria, they gave us Christianity with their culture. They invited their culture into Christianity. They made us to be, make believe of what they believe in. Now, number one of it is this. Your church marriage is not in the Bible. Tell me anywhere in the Bible that church marriage ever existed. The church marriage is the British traditional way of wedding. What the Bible actually recommended when church marriage is consigned is bride price. Paying the bride price of your wife. That is all. But they came into Nigeria, into Africa, and they brought their culture and rubbed it up with religion and they gave it to us. That's number one. Now, the court case. The, the Commissioner of, uh, of Justice and the General of, of the State, Professor Yabadi said, in his own Uh, 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 my decided to to forego the case. It it is it is it, they actually took the, the matter to court in the first place. The Babini never took take any political cause. Call Babini never go to court. 
No, there's a private that you believe all bad tier ball in the car. But I'll always tell you, you pray for them, never cost them. But one thing that was missing in that letter that I read, or in the letter written by Professor Yamo to Arisco and the Ugamican family, is one. Abbasiki does not have the right to confer a chieftaincy title on anybody. Go and read the traditional and chieftaincy title law of the whole Bender State, the Midwest region, and even of Edo State. The power to confer a chieftaincy title on anyone lies within the jurisdiction. Of the Oba of Benio Manobane do Kuapala Oba Ewari Okidigan the second. The government can can quash the case, no problem. But trying to reinstate the man to the position when he was not first and foremost ordained, confided upon that title by the palace, make it sacrilege. Emma Tabawa 19. Obasaki is my man. But I must say the truth at every time. He would have crushed the case and allow the Oba to deal with the traditional aspect of the whole situation. But no, rather than doing that, they went ahead and they were becoming political about the entire thing. That got many Benins worried, like me. I've been studying the case. I've not said anything. I just wanted to be very sure of where I'm, what I'm going to. So I'm to have much to tell the people. And, and whatever I'm saying to them is going to be, you know, based on facts and figures. They have been seen the letter written by that robot I knew there was something playing. In that letter, this young boy wrote what triggered my head. That they should go and look into the 1960 something, 97 something, you know, uh, 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 traditional uh, uh, rules and chief tenancy. And in that rule, I'm going to tell you, that rule states clearly that the upper of Bini will be the paramount chief as far as the Bini South is concerned. What that means is it will be the only recognized king in Benin South Kingdom. So, in what he is requesting for is for such a law to be amended to give to divide a door into different bits and bars in order. To weaken the power, the power of the Monobanedo. And that the Benins, like me, will not take. Nobody has divided the power of the king or the queen of England. Nobody has divided the, the power of the, of, of the king of Sweden. They still remain paramount. They still remain sacrosanct. In the eyes of the people. So it is quite worrisome that that the robots will will come up with such a very myopic suggestion when he knows who the upper is to the Bene people. Except some few who have been brainwashed into believing that the palace of the Oba Bene is nothing but just a mess too. I was privileged a few days ago to stand before His Royal Majesty. And I actually believed and I understood that if you stand before him, there is some waver that flow through you, Uburi, 
Oh, I never, I never actually believed that it happened, but I was there and I saw it clearly that this man is not just a human being. Listen, guys, I'm a pastor, but I believe the above beneath their deities on their own. They are living deities. There's something unique about them. I stood before him. My entire body was filled with ghost pus. And I would not want anyone to disrespect what I believe in. That's my hereditary. That's my identity as a man. My pride. Now, let's go to the artifact. What connects the, 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 the government of Obaseki to the Ogiamans and all this Buraha that is happening today is all around the artifacts. We fought when the artifact came up. I stood, I was still in Sweden then. I stood against it. The artifact belongs to the palace. It was taken from the palace, should be returned back to the palace. That was my stand. And thank God, we all rally around the palace of the Obama Benin, and with the help of the federal government, the, everything was returned back to the palace. Yet there was a part that Imasu Izodua came with that struck me, the financial part of it. I never thought of that. that. The reason why there is a fight is because of the financial part of the entire thing. That the, the government is actually interested in the monetary part of it, nothing more, nothing less. That shocked me to my bones. You can't because of money that existed after, not before, after the Benin Kingdom to not become the yastic for you to destroy millennium reign of a kingdom that is oldest in the entire world. The only kingdom that have not been changed, that is, its later rules have not been have not been wavered, even with the coming in of civilization. They have added on to the core value of that stool. I began to wonder, what shall it profit a man if he gains the own world and loses his soul? It means it's only bringing to our imaginations what happened in 18, in 1897 and the story that we heard that they were they true. Were they one one man in, in who were who was a conspirator? Were we this someone within the cycle who actually sought out the Benin Kingdom? I don't want to have a make believe. That's why I'm very careful. But with what I've seen today, it's giving me some idea that something actually went wrong in this kingdom during the time of the invasion of the throne. Is this not time for you to keep quiet? If you are a, blog, a blogger, if there's no political you know, affiliation to this, you must defend your own. You must defend your own, guys. You must fight to keep the kingdom warm. If during the time of the invasion there was no collapse of the kingdom, why do why do we want to accept that right now? The narratives from that boy in Germany, as a result of some of these things that we are saying today, it's quite pathetic. That some of us are dancing naked on the social media, defending the indefensible. I bleed in my heart to see us selling out our pride for a mold 
of Eba and the pot of porridge. There is no other king in Benin's heart. The first throne of the Benin was in Udo, in Odeon. So, we all know what we are talking about. The entire Benin kingdom, the Edo speaking Benins, Edo speaking Benins are under His Majesty. His Majesty. Omonoba Nedo, Ukwa Bolo, Obaeware, the Ogidigan, the second. It's not questionable. It is not debatable. No political coloration can change that. Let me make it clear, guys. This is not 1897. This is 2022. No one can dethrone the other. I will not feed the eight. Go and ask Oyine Bolen what happened to him. This is not a joke right now. Go ask Oyine Bolen. It's no more. It's no more. Go ask me what I close to him. Let tell you what happened to him. If they will tell you the nemesis that befell him for taking or by away from the head of the traditional council in 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 a, in a do or in Bender State, go ask him. So that one alone, he destroyed his life. He was seeing pussycat. We will let run away from government house. Please, guys. Let's not go into what we can't finish. Let's bring peace to Edo State. All the back of another South Basaki and his and his co-travelers. You have just less than two years to remain in power. Do not destroy the fabrics of our belief. Oshomole in no Benin stood behind the palace, defended the palace, fought side by side with the palace, won many victories for the palace of the Obara Benin. He listened to the Obara. You can even be able to, you were there when our father was still the Dainike of Benin Kingdom. Of Oselo. Oshimele took you to him. You heard you were there. You were, you were there when, when you went for a visit. When you had this, this peace accord. When our father was narrating how Oshimele brought you to him. That tells you how important it was, the kingdom was, to Adam Salih Oshimele. He no Benima. If you, if you, of yes, say, say, the son of the palace, your father was actually an administrator in Benin Kingdom after over a minute was deported to Calabar. Your father was an intermediary between the Benin people. And the British Empire before the demise of our bar and the coronation of the new bar. If that was true, your lineage would have understood the story better than any other person. So, trying hard to fight a system that you are aware of is not good. Benin supported you. We stood behind you. We fought for you. Against all odds. And we want you to listen to us. We fought for you 
so that you will listen to us. The palace of the Obar of Bene is a no-go area to the Bene people. It is a danger zone. It's like a naked transformer that anybody that goes near is being electrocuted. We might love you like I, you, I do, but I will not choose any political leader over my king. Yeah, guys? After, after the God of heaven that I serve, the next man I respect is your Barabene. Even before the government. Because this has been an institution that has been there from time immemorial. They are the source of my identity as a man. So I have no other choice than continually giving maximum respect to the throne of the Yoba. There's no political whatever that will make me humanitarian to line up with anyone against their royal father. So we are using this medium to call on anyone that have any hidden agenda over the question of the case against the Ogiyame, particularly Arisco or Semibi. Not the Ogiyame because how many of the Ogiyames are friends? Many of them actually believed in some of in eight percent of the narration of the Benin King. I want to ask a question, guys. When did the Ogiyame family started fighting the palace? Why well, you know when this Aristo came to power? Before Arisco came, before he's coming in, I, I, I only hear of Ogiyame as part and parcel of the palace. Just after Arisco came in, they were actually hearing the Ogiyame of Utantan. Utantan is just is just up on my road. Utan, straight. And if you could, because I said you, the, the Ogiyame of Utanta, I'm not telling you just a play road, it simply means you're just an Ojo way. I also ask yourself this question. There is a part in the Ogiyame Palace that in those days, when the Oba, it is only the Oba being that passes through there. When it's coming today, they pull it down. No one passes through there. At the moment he's gone, they, they, they restore it back. It, that same part is also in the palace of the Olea. It's also in the palace of a row. And many of these other, you know, seven top chiefs that made up the, the Benin Kingdom. That part is there. It is only the other that passes through there. If he passed through there, as he's coming, they pull it down, he walked through it, no one else passes through that road. And when he's done, that door, when he's done, they raise it up before the day breaks. That tells you the superiority of the upper of Benin engaged Yogi Amir. I respect them. I respect every Benima. Doesn't matter who you are. I give them much more respect. But I will not want some part because of financial inducement, inducement that is involved in this today, you know, a traditional setting. I want to now want to destroy what we have held onto for a very long time. I am your bevavedo. The worst part of it you also know is most of the Enoges are even bigger, stronger in territories than the Ogiyame. That makes it a little bit funny. So somebody said that the Ogiyame has a palace. Have you gone to the palace of Ero? Have, have you gone to the palace of Iyase? Have you gone to the palace of uh, Olia and other chiefs? Ezomo, have you gone to their palace? 
and see how how gigantic and mighty it is. Because they have the power, does that make them now to become kings? Does that make them to now equate themselves with the palace of the Oba of Bini? Let the government stay clear from traditional issues, just like Oshomole did in Benin, so that peace and tranquility will restore back to Edo. God bless Edo State. God bless the Obara Benin. Obara Top Bay is here. Thank you guys for watching this morning. Please share this video. Let it go viral. God bless you all. Have a blessed day. And bye for now. All right. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, right there for listening to this wonderful video. Please help us to share so that this can go far. As you can see that uh, there's some kind of division going on now within the Edo people, which is very, very wrong. Um, please, let's get this right. Okay. Uh, by helping us to stand for what is right. You know, like I said before, a specialist are the one talking right now. They know much better than me when it comes to issue like this so that's why i don't really have much to say about it but all i all i can say like i said before uh our oba of Bini, you know uh must be respected at all times i grew up to know that yes he's my king he's my only king we cannot have two kings in Edo state all right so please if you are a true Edo son stand for what is right protect your king the united kingdom they are protecting their own uh queen so what is wrong with you, as a son or daughter, you know, not to protect your own king? So, yeah, that's all I can say right now. I appreciate every one of you. Our brother, Mr. Stephanie Ramato, I've said it all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please help us to share. We'll be coming back again tonight at 5 p.m. Please join us. We have important broadcast to give to you. Remember, it's all about first confess. So that's what we do here. I appreciate every one of you and God now God bless you now. Help us to share and like this video. Bye for now. Yes, yes. Um, no, I cannot take calls because I'm not in the in the in the position to take calls on this sensitive uh, issue. All right. So I'm sorry. Anyone that have anything to say, just leave it on the comment section. You can leave it on this live uh, comment section or uh, later you can leave it when we end the show. Thank you very much. Take care, my people, and bye for now.